I just want to show you how I have built templates to edit faster with my team, with my social media team, and also hope that I can enlighten your world to build your own templates. Before I go into detail on the templates, I just want to give you a little bit of information about me. So I'm a shredder by day, a shooter, editor, producer, and I work for the Bureau of Educational and Cultural Affairs at the State Department. And I've been there for the past four years as a federal contractor on a pretty small team. And I make short promo videos for social media and YouTube um, documentaries about our international exchange programs that we sponsor. So I don't know if you guys have ever heard of the Fulbright program. That's one of the programs that our office sponsors, and there's like hundreds of them. So that's been super fun, and I've learned a whole lot um, through that process and kind of innovated. And lately, I've been doing some stop motion promos and started building some templates to share with my social media producers since they don't really know how to use After Effects or Premiere Pro. So I was like, since we have a small team, what if I could build some templates? And then by night, I started a training channel, sort of a video editing channel called Premiere Gal. And sometimes my dog makes a special appearance. I call him Premier Pup, but his actual name is Spike. Um, and it's a great way for me to sort of learn and also share information. And I also started on my website, premiergal.com, a tutorial request page. So that way, if people, beginners or anybody, are welcome to say, hey, I need to learn how to do this. And I do pretty high quality tutorials, and it's completely free. So it's been super fun doing that. And recently on the channel, I started making some free templates and also selling them. So in this talk, I'm going to talk about you know, why build your own templates, why and how. And I'm going to demo and show you some of the templates that I've made, sort of open them up to sort of see how I made them. And then I'm also going to go into the new release called Essential Graphics Panel that was just released last week on April 19th, which is completely changing the way that we're doing titles in Premiere. And then I just hope to show the value to you and to start making your own. So Premiere templates, why are they important? So they save you time with your team. So for instance, as I was saying before, you know, uh, my social media producers, we have a small team um, at the State Department, and they don't really have the technical skills to build stuff. And Adobe Spark has limitations. It's just sort of a 16 by 9. You can't do the square social media, which is really popular now. And I'm sure that you guys have seen those videos now where people are just watching without the sound on, and it's just you know subtitles coming up and stock video. And that's what, some of the stuff we do for like international days. And so I was able to build some square templates to pass on to them. So it saves you time. And also, it keeps you on brand. You know, Sometimes social media coordinators aren't that design savvy, and they don't have the color palettes in place, the same font. So I'm able to embed that within the template, and then they can open it up and stay on brand. And they're adaptable. You don't have to stick with all of the you know, keyframes that I include in the animation portions. They can learn as they go along and become better. And you can sell them if you want to on different sites. So I also want to differentiate project templates and individual asset templates. So the project templates are an entire video that I create as a template so people can edit it and export it as its own video. Okay. And individual assets are like call-out boxes. I actually have this free call-out box template on my YouTube channel that you can download. Lower thirds, logo reveals, and stuff. Those are assets that you can include in your larger projects, right? So you guys understand the difference between the two? Cool. So let's go ahead and see some of these templates in action. Let me open up Premiere Pro here. So this is a template that I created. Um, ECA, if you see in the corner there, that is the name of the Bureau of Educational and Cultural Affairs. So this is actually just a little template that I put together. Very basic. It's just a photo sort of zoom, zooming in. And then you have the title here where they can edit. And they transition on and off. It's very basic. Um, but again, it's the font that we use. And they can literally just go in and replace those photos with video, stock video, or actual photos that we've taken. And if you see here in the timeline, there's a series of sequences that I've called placeholders. And here you can see that I just included insert title, type hashtag, all of that stuff. So let me make this a little bit bigger here for you. So let's say one of my social media producers wanted to edit uh, this photo here. All they had to do is open up placeholder. I call it PH placeholder. Just open that up. And here is two layers. I have a title right here and a photo underneath. So if they wanted to replace this photo, what you can do is actually go and import 
photos here in the project panel. And what I'm going to do, it's kind of tiny here. I have these photos here already. Let's say I wanted to change it to this photo. All I had to do is go over here, right click, and click on replace from bin. And what that's going to do is just replace that photo with the file that I have selected in the bin. So if I hit that, now I have that photo in place. And of course, it's not the same size. So you have to go in and make some further adjustments if you think it's necessary, because not all photos are the same size. So I told my social media producers, I was like, look, you probably have to go up here into the effects controls and probably make some changes to the scale um, over time to make it work. And then up here in the title, in this layer, you could just open that up. Now this is the legacy titler tool because now it was replaced by the essential graphics panel. You can still use this titler tool though. This is the older version. It's now called legacy. So I could just go in here and make type whatever I want. So Luma Forge is awesome or something, or fab. So this is just a way that you can share this template with somebody else and have them edit it. So I'm actually going to be making some square uh, templates um, on my channel very soon. But I found that a lot of people are looking for this because you can't find a lot of square templates. It's a fairly new thing. And you can also use them on Instagram. So another template that I created um, is split screens. So split screens, um, I don't know if you guys have ever seen like acapella singers on YouTube where they have like the bass, the singer, the guitar player. I actually had a musician request this asset from me being like, oh, it takes so long to have to divide up the screens each time. Can you make a template? And I was like, yeah, I can do that. And it does take a lot of time. So um, I'm going to show you right now, how do you open up a template within an existing project? So let's say you're working on a project, you download a template, how do you open it up? Don't you have to reopen the project? Well, actually, you can use the media browser right here, and you can find the project file. So I have the split screen here. And right now, you can see that there's all these folders here. It's pretty tiny. But basically, I have these final sequences here. And if I double click on it, it'll start to import that project into this existing project. So you can see here, if I play this back, I made a series of split screens. And so you know, there's four in this one here. And I actually here, you can see I put the, the pixels here. It's 640 by 1080. It was just sort of basic math dividing up the frame. And so I made a series of split screens that people can use and just drag and drop, as I showed you before, the content. So let's say that I wanted to import this actually in the project, because right now, if you see here, it's actually pretty tiny. It says it's just in the source monitor. OK, so that means it's just being shown here. It's not actually in the project yet. So to do that, you can go back here. You can create a bin. I already created one here called split screen templates. And just literally click on the source monitor media here and drag and drop it into the folder. And what this will do is import everything into the project. So now you'll see that I've nested all of these sequences here. If I open this up here, all templates. Now it does not say source monitor. So let's say you wanted to edit this split screen. All you have to do is double click on it. Double click on it again because I have a few nested. And you can see now all the layers that were in that sequence are in there, and you can edit the placeholder. So if I wanted to edit one of these photos, just double click on it, go over here to your stock video if you have any imported, and I can just drag and drop a new video on top. This is a dog sticking its head out the window here. And you can just go up here and resize it, however you like, move the position. And now if I go back to placeholder or template two here, if I can find it, there we go. Now you can see that the dog's head was replaced here. And then you can, of course, get rid of the title here. But this is just a quick way, drag and drop. Everything is divided up, really easy to work with. And so before I close here, I wanted to show you the new Essential Graphics panel and what that does. So I have a new sequence here that's empty. And so if you go down to New Item in the Project panel, you'll notice that the Titler tool is gone. It's no longer here. It's been replaced by a type tool. So it's here in this toolbar. It's called a type tool. If you click on it, and then you just sort of click in the program monitor here, you can type out a text here. It's really tiny. Let's make that bigger. And this is all editable in the essential graphics panel 
And if you don't find it here, you can go up to Window and go to Essential Graphics. So you need to have it highlighted before you resize it. So I'm just gonna make this a bit bigger here. And the great thing about this new panel and the reason why it's so awesome is that what we've been waiting for is to actually have the Photoshop layer feature inside. So now you can actually create layers. So if I wanted to make a rectangle to go behind this text, you would just click on this little new item icon here, new layer, actually. And here it has a little drop down of different things that you can create. You can even insert a graphic from the file. So if I wanted to make a rectangle here, I'm going to just go to my selection tool and I can just click and move this around, make it bigger in the program panel versus having to do this in the title or tool before, if you're familiar with Premiere Pro. And you notice that the text is now not here. So what I have to do is just literally drag this layer over here in the, uh, in the essential graphics panel below. And then you can, of course, center this up. There's the center horizontal and vertical. And you can do the same with the text. Now, let's say you wanted to save this for future and make this a template um, for an upcoming video project that you're working on and you want to share it with somebody else. You can actually control click on this or right click on it and export as a motion graphics template. So there are now files called .mogrt, it's like mogurt, I don't know what people are gonna start calling it, but that is what it is called and you can actually save it to your Creative Cloud library and share it um, with your team that way or you can save it to your local drive um, or save it directly to your essential graphics panel. So that's pretty cool. And you can also, you'll notice that the one part that was confusing to a lot of people because it's not as intuitive as what we had before, right now, where is this asset that I just made? It's not in the project panel. This is something they're probably gonna work on. So what I have to do is actually just click on the new title that I made here in the, in the timeline and drag it into the bin. And then now you'll see, it's kind of hard to see, but there's now a new a graphic layer here and you can rename it whatever you want. So that's a way to get it into your bin. Lastly, um, if you go up to browse in the essential graphics, uh, Premiere Pro now has a bunch of templates that are already made, including social media. We also have some captions and subtitles. And so it's a starting point. These are all Mogurt files that we can just click and drag and drop into the sequence. And it will take a second to download it from the cloud and what you can do is edit it from there. So this is a great thing that's gonna be coming out more and more. If you ever went to videohive.com or Motion Array, they, they're gonna start creating Mogurt templates for Premiere Pro. What I'm trying to tell you guys is that if you work on a small team, I would highly recommend starting to make these type of templates because it's really gonna assist in your workflow. And you can also become a producer for motionarray.com. They're looking to hire people and you can make a, a certain royalties off of what you sell. And you can also make your own. I started selling my own um, photography templates for photographers, so it's like a slideshow, on my website, premiergal.com store. And I also have a couple free templates on my YouTube channel. So um, that's it as of now. <laughs>